Hey guys, we're going to be looking at uh, points of inflection and second derivative in this session. Now, we might have, you might have learned this from the previous videos, but um, a stationary point actually happens when f dash of x is equal to zero. Now, at, when this happens, there are th potentially three situations that could happen. The first one is where it's a stationary point, but it's not a point of inflection. Well, the second situation is where it, it is a point of inflection, but it's not a stationary point. And finally, where it's both a stationary and a point of inflection. So these are the three situations that could happen um, when f dash of x equals zero. So with that in mind, uh, for the second derivative, there is a condition. And the condition for the second derivative is... f double dash of x is equal to zero. I'm going to explain this, explain about this a little bit more in the in the next slide with an example, and hopefully get an idea from there onwards. So here's the example: find the points of inflection on the curve of f of x equals, <clears throat> excuse me, x cubed minus nine x squared. So the first thing we're going to do here is um, we're going to differentiate the function. So we're going to get f dash of x equals 3x squared minus 18x. We're going to double differentiate it. So f double dash of x equals 6x minus 18. Now, because we want to find the point of inflection on this curve, we know that f double dash of x is equal to 0. Because that's one of the condition of points of inflection. So with that in mind, it's 6x minus 18, which equals 0. Rearranging things, I'm going to get x is equal to 3. Now obviously I need to find the y value of this uh, function here. So I'm going to figure out what f of 3 is. That's 3 cubed minus 9 times 3 squared, which simplifies to minus 54. So therefore we can say that um, on this curve, a point of inflection will be at 3, negative 4. Now in the next slide I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about relation to concavity. Uh, let's have a go. So how does the double uh, differentiation have a, what type of relationship it has with um, concavity? So having a look at it, uh, we know that if f double dash of x is less than 0, it is known, well, it's concave down, which means the turning point will be a maximum point. Now, if f double dash of x is greater than 0, it would be concave up. Therefore, we would have a minimum point that is on the curve. Right, so with all this whole lot of f dash of x, f dash of a, a well, I mean, what am I saying here? Sorry, let me just rephrase that. You've got a whole lot of f dash and f of functions here. And I guess you really want to just summarize it. And so the best way to look at it is if you have f of a, it gives the y value of at x equals a. And if you have f dash of a, that gives the gradient at x equals to a. And finally, if you have f double dash of a, that actually gives the concavity at x equals a. So basically, with the f double dash of a, you can actually tell whether it's concave up or concave down. And if f double dash of a is less than 0, then of course it's concave down, which means it's a maximum point. And if f double dash of x is greater than 0, it's concave up, so therefore it's a minimum point. Now just because f double dash of x equals to zero doesn't mean it is guaranteed that it's a point of inflection. So in other words, uh, we actually call this inde indeterminate. And what we really need to do is um, once we get the points is we check two points close, close by so that um, we can actually determine its nature. 
whether it's actually a point of inflection or it's just a maximum point. So some, it's best to always check. And I'll give you guys, in the next slide, I'm going to do an example where you can kind of see how this applies. So here's the example. Uh, locate the stationary point on the curve f of x equals x plus 1 to the power of 5, and then determine its nature. First rule of thumb is that we know that stationary point happens when f dash of x equals 0. So we're going to work out f dash of x. And using the chain rule, we're going to end up with 5x plus 1 to the power of 4. And because we know that the gradient is equal to 0 at stationary point, we have 0 equals 5x plus 1 to the power of 4, which means rearranging things, we're going to get x is equal to negative 1. Now, from this point onwards, f of negative 1, we're going to calculate the point itself. So f of negative 1 is actually equal to 0. So the point that we're actually working with is negative 1 and 0. But now we need to determine its nature. So keeping that in mind, we're going to work out... We know that f dash of x is 5x plus 1 to the power of 4. So f double dash of x is 20x plus 1 to the power of 3. Now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute negative 1 into f double dash of x. So f double dash of negative 1, uh, that would just equal 20 times negative 1 plus 1 to the power of 3, which in fact equals 0. Now, we can't be sure that this is actually a point of inflection just because it's 0. So we need to kind of look at the, what's happening to the right and left of negative 1 to determine it. So what I'm going to do is, is do some further investigation here. And the best way to do it is, I'm going to look at f of negative 0 0.9. And when I substitute it, I find out that it's 0.000000. I think I said too many zeros there. Anyway, that is what you should get. And I'm going to find out f of negative 1.1. And that is equal to negative 0.00001. See, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to figure out what's happening before and after the point. So in fact, if, if I look in the middle, it'll be f of negative 1, and that's equal to 0. So as you can see, the y value is is changing. Um, it's actually, if you look at f of negative 0.9, it's below... Sorry, it's not below. It's actually above 0, while f of negative 1.1 is actually below 0. Uh, because of that, this has to be a point of inflection. So I can conclude that negative 1, 0 is actually a point of inflection because of those two values there. So if you do get to the situation where f double dash of x equals 0 and you're unsure whether it's a point of inflection or not, it is always good to just check those two points right next to it. Because if, um, if both of them are... Uh, above it, then you can kind of say it's um, maximum, or if it's below, it could actually, sorry, sorry to confuse you there. The best way to do is to do both values and see what happens. Even just draw a sketch of it, just to see what happens with the graph. And you can see whether it's a local maximum, local minimum, or a point of inflection. All right, hopefully you guys got um, all of that. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it for this session. Thanks for watching.